Hello, welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today I am making a goat milk soap, and I'm gonna be using a more masculine scent, although I'll probably use this soap because I love those kind of woodsy, musky smells. Uh, it's called Black Tie from Crafter's Choice, uh, Wholesale Supply Plus, uh, and it just smells divine. So for the coloring, I'm gonna be using activated charcoal, uh, and I have my super fine Australian red clay that is just gorgeous. So that's going to be what I'm going to use for my colors. I also have my little um, frosting comb, it's called, that they use on cakes. I'm going to use it on soap. And I'm going to use this edge today in my mold, drag it across for some interest on the bottom layer. So that's the plan for today. I'm gonna to get my goat milk lye solution cooling off. I've got my oils all melted and ready to go. And we will come back and make some black tie soap. All right, we've got everything pulled together here and we're ready to move forward with our black tie soap. And uh, the description for the fragrance is um, a combination of black peppercorns, um, woodsy, patchouli, musk, and citrus is how they're describing it, and it just smells really good. So uh, I, what I went ahead and did was I have silk fibers, a little sodium lactate, and some titanium dioxide in my goat's milk lye solution here just to brighten it up because the goat's milk does yellow. I have um, my goats give very creamy milk, and so it gets really yellow in the lye solution, and I wanted to brighten it up for the swirls to stand out. And then in my oils, I have them all melted and cooled. I have um, some, a couple tablespoons of organic colloidal oats and some kale and clay in here. And then uh, I have my colors and pots all set off to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand stir this in. We'll add my goat milk, creamy, creamy goat milk to the oils here. just makes for such a nice bar of soap. It's so soothing on your skin, I think. Um, and of course, all the benefits of goat's milk, the, the pH of it, the lactic acids, the vitamins, it's loaded with like over 20 or 30 different vitamins that are very nutritious for your skin. And this is all just topically. I think drinking raw goat's milk is really good for you also, but just on your skin, it's really great. So I'm gonna get this kind of blended in really well, hand stirring, incorporate it. I'm gonna go ahead and add my fragrance because I want that in everything. Boy, that smells nice. And uh, the review said that this won't rice. It's not supposed to rice or accelerate trace. It's supposed to behave itself. So let's hope that's true. <laughs> For what I'd like to do. So the plan today, because I'm going to use my little frosting comb, is I'm going to pour off some here and I would like, because it's a black tie, I'm going to put my activated, some activated charcoal in the base and we're going to pour a little bottom layer, do our little design on top and when it firms up we'll pour the top layer. And I'm just thinking about doing it in the pot swirl because I just really love in the pot swirls. I know I do it a lot. Um, it's one of my favorite looking bars of soap. And you never know what it's gonna look like. It's just always a mystery when you cut in how it came out and I, I just love all that. So that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go ahead and take my whisk in here real quick just to make sure it's incorporated really well. I don't want any lye pockets or oil pockets or nothing mysterious. We just want a nice smooth bar. So I've noticed when I cut my bars, they have like a little bumpy on the surface and uh, it makes it look like the bar isn't smooth. The soap is very smooth. And uh, what I think is happening is I don't have my wire tight enough on my cutter and that's why I'm getting a bumpy surface. So when we come to cut these, I'm gonna tighten my wire up really tight. Hopefully I won't pop a string on it. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna see if that'll help me get a smoother cut on the bar because I don't plane the surface of my soaps. Um, I don't like to waste that much soap. I bevel the corners, but I don't plane the flat surfaces. Um, and after you use the bar once, that all goes out anyway, and it's a nice smooth bar. But anyway, that's what I think was going on. We will give it a try tomorrow when we cut and see if my theory is correct. <laughs> now, I'm gonna go ahead and add in 
Oops, better wipe my hands off here. Activated charcoal into our base and we'll give this a nice stick blend so that, um, actually let me pull this out right now, so that it'll be a nice medium trace because I want it to thicken up really well so our little combing will go well on it and we can pour on top and not cut through it. So let me get another spatula for that and my stick blender here. And we'll get that charcoal blended in. All right, that's a nice, you know, medium trace on that. We'll go ahead and get the blender out and get it poured in our mold. And I'll probably still have to let it set for about, you know, maybe 10 minutes to thicken up enough to use our little frosting comb on it. Put this over so you can see the pour. It's always so fun to just pour soap. Very satisfying. This got kind of bubbly. I got some air bubbles in my um, blender, so I'm going to tap this down on the floor just to get the try to work the bubbles out so it's nice and smooth. And you know, as well as the goat's milk being really great for your skin, activated charcoal is very uh, good for your skin also. There's a lot of benefits in there. And again, in the name of disclosure and pleasing the FDA and all that, my soap will get you clean. That's the only claim that I'm making is that it will clean you. It's a soap. Um, and the reason I put all the different additives and things in there, uh, because I think they are wonderful additives and you can do research and find out what you think about that. <laughs> so, but I know according to regulation, all I can claim is that my soap will make you clean. And uh, yes, I do make that claim. It will clean you. I'm gonna tap this down on the ground and we're gonna let it sit and firm up just a little bit and we will come back in, oops, with our little frosting comb and get moving forward on that when it's ready. So while I'm waiting for my base here to firm up, I'm gonna go ahead and mix my colors for the swirl. I'll reuse my charcoal bucket here. And, oops, there we go. Just pour off some of the soap for the swirls. Now I have my little flower mold so that when I bring my comb across, I'm gonna have some extra and I don't wanna waste anything. So I've got my little flower mold to pop the extra soap in. So I'm gonna check this. Let me see here and see if it's gonna keep. Oh yeah, we're good to go. All right, let me move this out of the way so you can see what we're doing. And I just stink it, stick it down drag it across and yeah, my lines are a little wiggly but you know what it's all right there we go
And we're back the next day with my black tie soap. I did go through gel phase um, and the goat milk and everything. I just kept an eye on it so it didn't overheat. Um, and everything went well through gel phase. So let's get it out of the mold and see how that bottom layer came out and all those swirls. I'm excited to get into this one. Smells really nice this morning. Oops. Ah. Chopping up the corners here. I don't want to do that. There we go. Goodness, I really mashed that corner up. All right, it is still very soft. Um, so I will put it through the log splitter, but then I'm gonna let it sit before I cut. It has been a couple of days. This was a very soft soap, and so uh, I'm cutting this, um, I think it's two days after I unmolded it, just so it could firm up and be ready to go. So it turned out cute. So I did tighten my wire, and I think that that was my issue with the bumpy surface. I'm getting a much smoother surface area on my bars now that I've tightened that wire up. It's definitely smoother and less bumpy.